Hello and thank you for watching our video series titled I Want to Be a Network Engineer presented by RouteHub. This video is intended for individuals who are new to networking and want to be a network engineer. This video can also be used for network engineers who has been doing networking for a few years so they're not beginners but they want to make the next steps in their career. This video will provide some pros, cons, tips and suggestions uh, for becoming a network engineer in the IT field. My name is Michael Tomatis and I've been doing network engineering for the past 13 years. I've worked on network designs, deployments, and support for companies at all sizes from small to very large. I have worked in many industries such as financial, service providers, nonprofits, and government. For the government side, I was the senior backbone engineer responsible for the Department of Energy's network backbone, which contained 10,000 employees at one of their campuses. As a consultant, I continued to work in these industries and business sizes across the United States and in other countries such as India, China, Europe, Vietnam, and Africa. During the past 10 years, I have mentored many people who were desktop technicians to security guards within companies. This is true. And they would ask me what they could do to become a network engineer. So I would provide tips and suggestions for them to get there. I'm proud to see these same people today who are network engineers doing design and deployments by following some of the things that I suggested. So I decided to put all of these tips and suggestions and some action items in a presentation document recorded as a video and shared with others on YouTube who may benefit from this. These are tips and suggestions based on my actual experience and what I had done to become a network engineer. Many other network engineers may provide different and additional tips for becoming an engineer, but more or less everything is very similar and the same. So let's get started. The one thing to understand about not just networking or desktops, but understanding the expectations. Anybody who's want to get into IT or information technology should understand that there are certain things you have to expect from this profession. First, you will spend the first part of your life in this field with a, an operational and support role. What that means is when something is broken, you have to fix it. And this could happen 3 in the morning. This could happen th uh, 5 p.m. on Christmas Day. It all depends. That's one of the um, things that you have to expect is going to happen. And what your roles will be is an operational and support role for fixing issues, but also getting your hands involved with configuration and a little bit of deployments like racking in terms of data centers. In terms of IT, you're always learning. IT and technology always changes. Therefore, you have to always be learning. Just because you know OSPF inside and out or VPNs, for example, doesn't mean that that's going to um, remain the same. There are new VPN technologies such as Get VPNs or DM VPNs, which are making VPN connectivities more robust and dynamic. You always have to be learning. If not, your skills will become unvaluable and you'll be let go. Expert and specialization. The one thing you want to do is many people in IT will get their hands in many different things. They do a little bit of servers, a little bit of security, a little bit of networking. We all do that. But you need to figure out what is your area of expertise. For example, for me, my area of expertise is networking. And kind of further, it could be routing, switching, and a little bit of security and with voice unified communications. You want to make sure that you're going into this and that you're finding something that you're going to specialize in. Pros and cons. Now, the great thing about being in IT is the money's good. I mean, I worked in companies where I had a salary of about 120K. Now, I'm, you know, so that's something that, that's been very good, though. Now, that, of course, reflected upon my experience and a little bit with my credentials of being a CCIE. So a lot of those things uh, come into play. Another good um, positive thing about IT is that there are a lot of great opportunities. 
Um, a good friend of mine used to say, um, not everybody needs someone to cut their grass. Everybody needs somebody for IT. And that is very, very true, though. Whether the economy is bad, people need people still need individuals like us to manage and to maintain and to support their network. So there's a lot of opportunities across the U.S. and other countries. But that comes with some consequences and things for, for you to consider. That in an IT, there are long hours involved. And this comes back to the operational and support role. And the long hours could detail you working on something like projects or fixing something. And most of the time, you will have a salary. That means you have a salary like 80000 a year. Now, that's assuming you're working a 40-hour week, but you could be working maybe 50 or 60 hours a week. So those times have kind of changed, not like the dot-com days back in the 90s, but understand that being in IT, you will have a salary for your compensation. Though. So just kind of keep those things in mind for expectations. So forget about networking for a second. Let's look at IT at a very big picture. And this is for any individual, not just choosing networking, but anything else that they want to specialize in. So under the IT umbrella, we have these major concentrations of what people will usually go into in IT. The first is servers, like, like a server administrator or a server um, a systems engineer. And this could be specializing with Windows, Unix, Linux, or even with a Mac. And a server means that you're, ma that you're managing design deployments of servers that could be mail servers, application servers, Active Directory, and so forth. Desktops can also be Windows, Linux, Unix, or Mac. They're usually going to be Mac or Windows. And this is basically managing, it's like a desktop technician that's installing software on a computer, um, setting up printers and login issues, it's really working with the desktops or and very closer to the end user. Networking is a field that deals with well, combining all of these things together. In order for servers to communicate with each other or desktops to communicate with each other or for voice equipment like voice over IP to, to communicate with each other, security operations like firewalls and IPS, or even some development engineering aspects for them to do their job with, that could interact with other systems. Everything has to be networked together. So usually networking is a very high level position within a company that has very great and grand responsibilities. Because if the network goes down, this is impacting multiple services like servers, desktops, security operations, voice telecommunications. And networking can contain like routing and switching and so forth. This video is focused on uh, emphasizing on the networking aspect a little bit further. Voice and telecommunications 